in your testimony and in some of your answers, you, you indicated that uh, wage growth is at about 3%. Um, and there was some comment by some of the senator, or one of the senators at least, that the uh, nominal wage growth or the, that, that the current rate of wage growth uh, may or may not be keeping up with inflation, if I understand the question you were asked correctly. But if I understand your answers, uh, isn't wage growth today growing at a faster rate than inflation? Yes, real wages are, are going up. At, at, you, have to look, you have to look at the average over a year or so, and you've got to look at, at a broad range of indicators. There's no question that wages are going up in real terms by roughly the amount of the productivity increase, which is appropriate. So. And in your... Uh, use of the term wages, uh, do you include benefits or is there a separate calculation on how benefits wage, I mean, no, there, employee there, benefits? There are four different, there, there are countless measures of wages, of, of compensation, let's say. Um, the One of them that includes wages and benefits is the employee compensation index, and that might be our single favorite one. Uh, it's one of, one of four major ones that we look at. So that one does include uh, benefits, and it too is showing growth in excess of right around 3%, maybe in the low threes now. All right, thank you. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, we've also, in fact, I discussed with you earlier some uh, aspects of the labor force participation rate. And I understand that, that just the retirement or the baby boomers retiring is one of the biggest downward pressures in our labor, labor force participation rate. And I started to have a discussion with you in my earlier questions about uh, now that we've seen that labor force participation rate start to increase, uh, whether that would be stable or not. Could you just discuss a little more with me your, your uh, evaluation of what it looks like for us in terms of labor force participation in general? And I may follow up on that with a little bit. Yeah, so I, I would say it's very gratifying to see U.S. labor force participation actually move up by five-tenths over the course of the last year. As the labor market has gotten just stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, and uh, so that, that's been a great thing to see. Given, given a level of job creation that we've had, if labor force participation had not gone up, then the unemployment rate would now be much lower than it is. So the unemployment rate's actually gone up to 4% from 3.7%. But this is only a good thing because it, it, it means people are coming back into the labor force. The real thing, though, is even with these increases, we still lag other countries. We still lag other countries who have higher labor force participation. You pointed out uh, correctly that, uh, that the aging of the population is, is decreasing labor force participation at a trend rate, and that trend rate is about 0.2 or maybe 0.25% every year. So for us just to hold participation flat is actually a gain against a longer run trend. And really, really for the last, uh, really since 2013, since the end of the latter part of 2013, labor force participation has been flat to slightly up, which again is really good to see. But honestly, that's just a consequence of having a really good labor market. Um, there, I, I think if you're if you're going to have that be sustained through good times and bad, and and put us on a more competitive footing with other countries, it's going to need more than a good labor market. It's going to need policies that reach out and and you know, give people the skills and aptitudes uh, to, to, to be able to be sustainably in the labor market. All right, thank you. I, I can't remember where I read this, but uh, someone commented recently that uh, today, in the way our labor market is working, that if a person wants to work, there is a job for them. Do you tend to agree with that observation? Generally speaking, um, although, you know, if you're in some regions, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are regions of the country which are very poor and don't have job creation. I mean, I'll tell you where that comes from. The level of job openings is now at or above the level of unemployed people. Mm -hmm. So that, that you can say that then, in a sense, if you're looking for a job, there's at least numerically one job. But there are lots of people who are, you know, probably millions of people who are out of the labor force. And in a perfect world, in a better world, would be in the labor force. You know, they're in their prime working years, and they're not in the labor force because of uh, some kind of a, of a problem or issue. And I think those are the people we want to get back. All right, thank you. And just to switch topics uh, for a minute, <clears throat> we've seen, uh, I think you indicated, a little bit under 3% growth in our GDP in the last year. 
I guess on Thursday we're going to get some economic analysis that will give us some statistics on that. Um, one of my colleagues indicated today that with regard to the tax bill that was passed, there was a lot said, and this, I'm not going to ask you to comment on this, I'm just putting some facts out there. There was a lot said about how the tax bill would generate a $1.4 trillion deficit. That assumed, that projection assumed somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.9 or 2% growth in the economy. Um, and uh, it was indicated at the time from all of the analysis we got that if, if we just had four-tenths of a percentage rate of growth above that, there would not be any deficit involved with the tax legislation. And of course, we've seen far more than four-tenths of a growth so far in terms of the performance of the economy. Um, so that leads to my question, and I know that you, can't ha you don't have a crystal ball, but you do analyze what it looks like for the economy. And, and my question relates to uh, given what we've seen, we've seen a growth of about a, almost a percentage point in the, the GDP over the last 12 months, or previous growth rates, if I understand it right. Do you have a projection, or do you have a, anything that you can share with us about what you see moving forward as to whether the economy will continue to perform? Uh, I know you said that it, it, was, it may slow down a little bit this year, but could you, do you have a projection as to what it would likely look like over the next few years in terms of GDP growth? No, I, th I think you can. I think the good place to start with that question is is what makes up growth, and it, it really it really boils down to more hours worked, and then more output per hour. That's really all there is. You, mm -hmm. So so and more hours worked is really a function of population growth. Population growth has slowed or. Let's say it this way: trend labor, the trend growth in the labor force, given aging and given immig given immigration and everything we have, is only about five tenths right now. And actually, if immigration is going to be even lower, then it's going to be below five tenths. Immigration has made up, you know, half of that five tenths. So that's that's one piece of it: is 0.5 percent trend labor force growth. The rest is just productivity. We're no one knows, no one can forecast productivity growth with any. Um, uh, Confidence. All we can really do is is create policies that will, you know, encourage investment, encourage innovation, and, and all those sorts of things, and let productivity happen as it will. It's it's something that that just happens. But if you look at longer term averages, it's been very difficult to predict. But you'd have to have sustained high productivity. If you're going to have five tenths labor force growth, you'd have to have you know very high sustained productivity, higher than we've seen, frankly, to get you know, really high levels of growth. But that's why I think it's so important to focus on both of those two, both of those two things, labor force participation and also productivity. That's the, that's the closest in thing we can focus on to raise our potential growth rate. Well, thank you. And in, and in terms of increasing labor force participation, I know there are a lot of factors. One that's been brought up here today already um, is to uh, perhaps change our policy at the at the policy level so that a person who takes a job who's not currently employed, a person who's, <clears throat> who's willing to go take one of those jobs and become productive in the labor force uh, does not uh, actually economically suffer from that decision based on the, the safety net program support that the, the government is already providing. I'm not going to ask you to comment on policy, but is it correct that if we were to uh, eliminate or reduce the incentive to stay unemployed because of the disadvantage of um, economically of, of taking, of relying on wages rather than benefits would, um, would increase labor force participation? I mean, I, I think incentives do matter. And I think, uh, I mean, I, I would think if you go back to work, your pay should only go up. In my in my perfect world thinking again, easy for me yes. to say, but that's what that's what that's what I, how I would say it. All right, thank you.